The bushes behind me are hiding a secret. And even though it's been there since the late 1950s, very few people ever knew about it. It's another history mystery. So let's go and take a look. Here it is. You may have stumbled across one of these whilst out walking or driving, like this one we found in a field near a village in Staffordshire. This one in the woods has the remains of the barbed wire fence that once formed a protected compound. Its hatch is sealed shut. Many people have mistaken these for reservoirs or sewage pumping stations, but they are in fact neither. Remnants from the Cold War, they are Royal Observer Corps nuclear monitoring stations. The hatchways leading to a small bunker buried 18 feet underground which contained equipment designed to track nuclear blasts and their fallout in the event of an attack. In 1945, the Second World War was still raging in the Pacific. It was only brought to an end when the United States dropped two nuclear bombs on the Japanese cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Each single blast killed up to 100,000 people and devastated buildings and infrastructure up to five miles away. In 1949, the Soviet Union tested its first nuclear weapon, and in 1952, the United Kingdom became the third country to acquire a nuclear capability. Britain and the United States feared the Soviet Union and wanted to stop the spread of communism, while the Soviet Union felt pretty much the same way. Both sides believed their way of life was under threat, and this led to the Cold War an arms race that saw the buildings of tens of thousands of nuclear devices, first as bombs, but later strapped to the tops of increasingly accurate and powerful missiles. The response of the British government was to devise a programme to protect civilians in the event of an attack, the idea being that the population could somehow survive if they were warned and prepared. A booklet called Protect and Survive was sent to every household in Britain detailing how to prepare for a nuclear attack. It was accompanied by a series of public information films. When you hear the attack warning, you and your family must take cover at once. Do not stay out of doors. If you are caught in the open, lie down. And now here is a reminder about fallout warning. The fallout warnings were, of course, dependent on having good information about where and when a nuclear blast had happened and the prevailing weather conditions. Engineers set to work to build a series of nuclear monitoring observation posts at sites all over the British Isles. By the end of the 1960s, over 1,500 had been constructed. A network of group headquarters were also built in towns and cities, this is all that remains of the group headquarters in Shrewsbury, to which the monitoring post we found in our woodland would have reported. A few days ago, Magpie was lucky enough to visit a bunker in Gloucestershire that had been carefully preserved. The bunkers were often inside their own fenced-off compounds. This is the air vent, and the bomb power indicator, which measured the force of a blast. 
and this is the fixed survey meter which was used to detect radiation levels. The hatchway has a ladder that descends 18 feet. At the bottom is a small room that served as a store area and toilet. This manual water pump kept the bunker dry. A desk was equipped with everything used to monitor the nuclear blasts and communicate to the outside world. There were two bunk beds and during periods of heightened alert this bunker would have been permanently staffed by three civilian volunteers from the Royal Observer Corps. Although apparently safe in their bunkers, the volunteers that were caught on duty during an attack did not expect to survive as they were required to go outside on a regular basis to take readings. The nuclear monitoring system was scaled back at the end of the 1960s when it seemed like the threat of nuclear war had diminished, although about half the stations remained in readiness until September 1991 when they were all suddenly decommissioned. Most of them lie derelict, stripped of their equipment and often full of water and in a dangerous condition. For this reason it is advisable not to attempt to enter them and many are now sealed shut. Forgotten relics of a far more dangerous bygone era. <laughs>